We have our top two players of the week. We have a Clem, we have Max, we have a Terry, we have a Protoss. But only one can be the champion. And if you're in the chat, you know what time it is. Get your gamma going uh, because predictions are open. Place your bets on who you think will take the series. As spawning in the top left hand corner of Oceanborn, we have the French Terran player, the Red Terran representing Team Liquid. It is Clem. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the Danish Protoss player, the Blue Protoss representing Sidestorm Gaming. It is Max Pax. Go. Here we go. As Max Pax has been mainly relying on his PvP throughout the course of this tournament, we casted Max Pax versus Trigger, we casted Max Pax versus Hero, all of the PvPs. But now he's up against a Terran. He's up against the best Terran in the world. I would say the best player currently in the world as well. Clem, he has been popping off. He's been looking like a beast. Has been insane to see his performances over the past couple of months. But as I mentioned before, specifically over the past two weeks, I would say that Max Pax has actually been looking pretty comparable and pretty competitive with Clem. I'm referring to Max Pax's performances against Clem in the online weeklies, as well as the Big Lil Lu Cup, where Max Pax has been able to bait, uh, has been able to defeat Clem in the best of fives. That's been very impressive. Can he do it again? That is the question. Like I still favor Clem. I still do favor him overall. Ooh, as we have lost our Korean caster. Bit of a feels bad, man. Hopefully everything is okay with Inu. Um, shout out to Inu, by the way. He is a lovely Korean caster for Into the Clan, but uh, maybe experiencing a little bit of latency. Did end up dropping, but we can he can always join in um, for the later games. It's all good. As we do calm things down. Now, something that Max Pax, I mean, that he's best at, of course, in the world in PvT is a 4-gate blink. We've seen him time and time again bring down some big names. We casted Max Pax versus Oliveira last week, which did go to the Ace match, and, all, and it was specifically Oliveira popping off in every other scenario. But whenever Max Pax would open up 4-gate blink, he would just completely shut Oliveira down. At the same time, though, Clem is very familiar with Max Pax's style very well practiced against it so more for the not we actually see max Pax avoiding four gate blink against clem just because it doesn't really work out more for the not speaking of blink it is gonna be the twilight council so it is gonna be a blink based opener for max Pax. i mean technically it could be dts we have seen max Pax go for a dark shrine in this scenario instead but it is very rare should be blink there we go blink is on the way and the question becomes, how many gateways? Is it going to be two gate blink into a fast third? Is it going to be three gate blink, which is a more defensive safe build, or four gate blink stalker, something more aggressive? So what are we going for? And now Max Pax dipping in is going to be a 1-1-1 from Clem. Max Pax, has he confirmed? I mean, he's aware of the Cyclone. Should be aware of the build. Cyclone getting a lock on, Adept will get away. I love the body blocking there at a Max Pax, saving one of the Adepts. Uh, saves one, doesn't save the other. As Clem does move out. Behind this, reinforcing with Widow Mines, going for a Mind Drop, designed to scout. And Max Pax is getting a third gateway. So far, it looks like three gate blink. We'll see if Max Pax throws down a fourth. As he is holding on. This with the army. See someone asking in the chat, is Serral playing here? Serral is taking a break. Um, after EWC, a couple of players did go on vacation. Um, Hero went on like a month vacation. Solar took a break. Dark took a break. A lot of players actually took some time off after um, after the Esports World Cup and after the Bulgaria land. Likewise, Serral also taking some time off during the offseason. You want mind drops coming in. Of course, Serral also has to focus on his military service. And Max Max does pull away in time. Oh! Does catch the Metamac. And the Woodermine gets one probe. So no major damage. Nice response here out of Max Max. But at least Clem does confirm the lack of additional gateways. It's only three gate blink. 
into a third. So again, just a safer, more defensive, or just I would say safer opener here out of Max Max. He can be aggressive with this, that is true, but this pales in comparison to 4K Blink. Clem should be fine. Should be. He's got a tanker position in the main. He's got a bunker here on the low ground. Max Pax can threaten a dive. He could even threaten the add-ons and the upgrades. We'll see if Clem can minimize his losses. As Max Pax does have Hiker, does have Hiker Vision. Is going for is going for Sim. He's going for it. It looks like he will force a delay. He will force a cancel. As he does get a kill on the tech lab. Not a bad pickup. He bleeds out one stalker and one adept. And for Stim, not bad. So he'll delay the move out. Again, losing Stim is brutal because ideally Clem wanted to move out alongside it with his tanks, with his plyo. Last is going to be stuck at home. There are TCs on the way. Max Max working into charge. Max Max, he does reinforce. His goal here is just to contain. To contain Clem for as long as possible. Keep him pinned back. And Max Max blinking in. He wants that bunker. He's going to get it. Bunker goes down. And remember, Stim is still so heavily delayed. It's still not ready. Max Max, he can trade well. He can overwhelm. I'm bleeding out a little bit too much here. Does reposition the tank. Clem will defend, but at the cost of so many Marines. That was 12 Marines and the Raven going down. Ay ay ay. Brutal losses for Clem. Max Max playing this out very well. And hey, behind this, Max Max has got his third base, getting fully saturated. Charge is finishing up. Clem finally breaks out. Stim is still not done. See Max Max just being as annoying as possible, just chipping away at this move out. Catching a Marine, a Medivac, a tank, wherever he can. But Clem knows he has to get some damage done. He's hoping to at least deny the fourth. Can he, though? Tank does siege. Max Max here in the center of the map. It looks like we will force a cancel. Not bad. Nexus is denied. Max Max trying to respond. Zelda are warping in. And at this point, Clem has to back off. Yeah, he has to get the hell out of here. Does have to pull away. Zelda into the main. Max Max trying to catch the army. But who's going to catch who? Max Max, he, sees it. he wants a tank. He wants it. He'll get it. Tank goes down. Yeah, tank goes down. ACVs as well. Clem coming back, racing back home, but he's going to lose so much of the process. That's going to be what? Eight, nine SMVs going down. Ay, ay, ay. Ten workers. And Clem, he re Max Max, he recalls back home, losing only two stalkers. Very efficient trades. Max Max, he is popping off back at home. He has splash damage. Colossus, the first one is out. Second is on the way. Clem is looking quite committed here. As he moves out, Max Max, he's moving in once again. This time with Zealots. Uh, there are reinforcements. Minimize of force on borrow. Zelda dropping to the main. Main army's moving out. Again, this MVP observer giving Max Max so much information. Telling him whenever there's a move out, whenever his opponent's out of position. Clem is moving in, but again, they're a Colossus. And soon to be an overcharge. Range is not quite ready here for the Colossus, though. Swipe's going off. Catching out Marauders. Nigel doesn't quite connect, and now we have a second Colossus and an overcharge as well. Max Max, he shuts this down. Avoiding the mine shots. Establishes his fourth base. Clem has to back off. Behind this, going for a second starport, going into Mass Viking. Will help against the Colossus. So far, Max Max playing this out well. Picking up a Marauder. Observer finally gets found. There we go. <laughs> I mean, that snipe did tell Clem that there should be an Observer somewhere. 
Finally does full. Max Max Perky in. Sniping two Widow Mines. Oh, just the one. Getting a fifth base. So yeah, Clem, after a couple of move outs and after some denied expansions, he's going to be stuck at home. Max Max has the map control, taking another base. Likewise, so is Clem. Getting his fourth. But Max Max is looking quite secure. Now that he has his Colossus out there, we're waiting for his next choice of splash damage. Disruptors or Storm. One or the other. Has yet to really embrace either one. There we go. Second Robo is on the way. Looks like either Disruptors or a heavy Immortal count. Uh, going for a fourth Colossus. Oh my god. That's a little bit overkill, but okay. <laughs> Getting up to four. It's quite risky considering the Viking counts. We have how many? Uh, only eight Vikings. Okay. EP's going off. Zelda Rambay gets caught out. Nice catch here by Clem. At the same time, Max is pushing right down mid. Let's push through the center. And catch Clem off guard. Catching out a couple of Stalkers. He's pushing in. Pressure Stop was finally on the way. A good amount of Stalkers go down. Better trade for Clem. Yeah, we have hit Quadruple Colossus. Something you don't often see. Just because of the overkill that is done. But, sure, why not? Disruptors are on the way. Link is on the way for the ETs as well. Max Max trying to catch out the army. He can and he will. Ooh, brutal force field. Marines go down. Clem caught with his pants down a little bit there. Sniping Vikings wherever he can. Disruptors have arrived. Nova's going to be going up. Nice EMPs. Yeah, the Vikings are going ham. Colossus are going down. But what about the ground army? There's two Colossus left. Just barely looks like it is enough. And Max Pax still is overwhelmed. Nova goes off, forces back the army. The ghost count completely reset. And there's only one Viking left. Just one. Down to zero. Down to zero Vikings. Max Pax holds his own. Maintains two Colossus and two Disruptors. Clamp does retreat. Pulls away. Again, I don't think that Clem was really expecting that many Colossus, which is why he cut Viking production earlier on. Now he has to reinvest into Vikings. Colossus gaining ground once again, getting on top of the army. And Clem is having a hard time, and Nova grazes the army, takes that one more order. Gets another. And Max Pax is pushing in. Clem does snipe both Colossus, just barely. Gets both. Colossus go down. Warping is denied. Nice catch on the Immortal. Clem, he punishes. Oh, no! Oh, my God. <laughs> down, down. Avoids it over. Gets the Disruptor. Clem is crazy at the same time. Dropping across the map. Getting into the middle line. Probes are going down. Ooh, massive Nova connects. Takes down most of the ghosts. It's getting scrappy. Max Max still maintains a better economy, but Clemmy will find the fifth. The sixth, even. Does deny the center base. Clem pulling back. Fourth one is because you know you're going to lose at least one. True. Really, you should make eight Colossus because you know that you're at least going to lose three, right? You know. <laughs> True. You know you're going to lose them. Kappa. Oof. As the drop gets caught out.
unironically, it's the it's the TY of making SCVs. I don't know if you were around for it, but uh, TY back in his prime, I think it was in maybe early Legacy or end of Heart of the Swarm, um, but he would very often in TVZ build up towards over 100 SCVs, and his rationale would be because he would expect to lose some of them to Ling Bane run buys. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm going to lose SCVs anyway, so may as well ever make them. And it worked. Like, it, it worked very well for him. It's crazy. You would not want to be an SCV in TY's army, though. <laughs> ah. As both armies have remaxed. GT's never run by, but there it goes to defend. Oh, this is a... This is normal, actually. Is an orbital not a planetary? Bold move here, out of Clem. No planetary is the center base. That was going up. Max Pax unable to find a way in. Sniping a ghost. Never zones away. Meanwhile, at the same time, now there's another Rambay, but again, Clem is in position. He's ready for it. Meanwhile, Max Max sees the band of the Colossus going for mainly Disruptor. Nerves are going off. And Clem, he has no Liberators behind this, just sticking with a ground based army. Vikings forced to land. Vikings will be going down. And you can see, as soon as Max Max kills the Vikings, we have Colossus on the way. They're coming back in. Meanwhile, nice splits here out of Clem. He does avoid the Nervous. Takes down the Disruptors, takes a good fight. Max Max has to back off. At the same time, though, DTs, they hit the fourth. They hit the fifth. Six more SCV kills. Max Max pulling back. Quem does hold. Does lose quite a amount of workers. But he's holding his own. Max Max making two more Colossus at a time. Again, he reset the Viking count. Catches a free ghost. Clem, though, he does get an entire mineral, and oh my god, 16 probes! 17 probes go down, and the base, Max Max out of position. And Clem, does he keep going? Does he keep pushing? It's tempting, only disruptors to defend. Looking quite exposed. Ah, there we go, we have more reinforcements, we have a Colossus. Second Colossus has arrived, Nova goes up. And there's the recall as well. Clem, he has to get the hell out of here. Let's have the pull back. But a player staying on a low worker count. Liberator production has begun for Clem. The freedom is coming. Oh, Max Max getting called out. Meanwhile, at the same time, Clem going for a drop, going for a ghost drop. It's quite committed, he has to be careful. Ooh, one full medevac goes down. It's a very expensive drop here for Clem. It's got a lot of Marauders and Ghosts in the mix. He's pinned back. Speaking of, I believe most of his Ghosts are in that drop. He has to pull away. Does find another expansion, going for the Nexus. And it looks like he will get it. Doesn't get the mineral line this time. But does get the base. At the same time, drop does boost behind the mineral line. Clem pulling back. Drop's looking for another way in. This is potentially an opening. Yeah, there's four ghosts here in these three Metamax. It's crazy. <laughs> that's that's a low supply. <laughs> so let's catch a ghost. Rotating around. Did take some EP to the face. Nervous running back the army. Takes out a marauder. Ooh, another ghost falls. And Clem having some rough trades here. Being forced back. The Colossus reigning supreme. Where are the Vikings? And not enough. The base force to lift. SCV's going down, mules as well. And just Clem, just so much supply pinned in the corner of the map, unable to help out. 
Also, we saw the Liberators earlier. Ah, oh, they're defensive. <laughs> I was like, where are the Libs? They're sieged up at the left, on the left-hand side. They're not really doing much. The drops are cleaned up. Brutal losses for Clem. Defending. Nerves going up. It does feel like Max Max has had some better fights here, but Clem can still take this. Yes, I mean, he's ready for a concave. First around. Oh my god. Of course, swipes are brutal. I'm trying to keep up. Is popping off once again. Oh my god. He has some rough losses here for Clem. And it looks like Max Max, he is breaking through. I say that Colossus are low. Now getting very low. But it looks like it's more than enough. And again, there's no more EMPs, no more ghosts. Mainly Marine Marauder. Max Max, he pushes in. He looks like he has broken the third base and he has broken Clem. Very intense back and forth. But overall, better trades, better fights for Max Max. Takes down the Vikings. Gets 22 SEVs. Does lose all the Colossus. But he can just pull back. He can just pull back and keep going. Diving on the main army. Reinforcing with Mass DT. Jesus. DTs are on the way. Liberator is finally moving out, but at this point, yeah, it's going to be too late. Four probe kills. I mean, hey, the Libs do defend the base on the left-hand side. True. Keep it up. Drops, they do keep Max Max pin, but he does have the better army supply, he does have the better economy. 40 probes to 28 SCVs. I mean, mules are good, don't get me wrong, but are they that good? Uh, I don't know if I'm convinced. I mean, if Clem can somehow get on top of the disruptors, then maybe. But he has to rely on Max Max making a mistake. He has to rely on Max Max slipping up. And that shouldn't happen. Ghost getting caught out once again. Another ghost goes down. Uh, we can't afford these losses. As the Del, Del DT run by as they continue. They hit the natural, heading into the third. Main army pushes in, gets a kill on the CC. Orbital falls. So does the planetary. There's no saving it. Oh, I thought it was a Marauder drop. <laughs> the Viking drop. Let's go. Ah, gets cleaned up. Hi, hey, hi. I mean, Clem, he has caught his way back in supply-wise. Like, he's up in army supply. A lot of the supply is in medivacs. True. He denies an expansion. I mean, hey, the mules are helping. Oh. They're helping wherever they, wherever they can. Like, Clem still has a comparable army here to Max Max. and still win the fight. And very quickly get on top of the economy. So Clem is still in this. It's not over. I would love to see these Liberators incorporated in the main army, especially now that um, Max Max, he's seen this kind of defensive position. He knows that there are Liberators to defend, so we haven't really seen that much aggression here, that much harassment. Regardless, the armies, they spot each other. Max Max pushing in. Oh, Ghost getting pulled out. You survive. Oof. One falls. 
Again, pushing and disruptions is a difficult thing to do. Massive Nova connects. There's three left. Three disruptors behind this. More Colossus join the mix. And all it takes is one good Nova, and that forces back the Terran army. But it does re-establish another expansion. True. Let's re-establish. <gasps> oh my god. Gets another ghost. Clan pushing in. We're finding a mineral line. Not bad. Probes are getting caught out. I mean, hey, in a low economic, economic situation like this, I mean, every probe counts. Get six probes. Oh, Max Pax intercepting. Catching the ghost. Ghost goes down. The bio army as well. Yeah, nice catch here from Max Pax. Meanwhile, Clem rotates. Pushing in. Gets a sentry. That's the back off. Again, Max Pax was in position. This base isn't really too crucial. I mean, there's zero mining. There's no minerals. There's no gas. Max Pax is on a one base economy. Something I did need to point out is that Max Pax is running out of resources. So, despite having a higher probe count, it doesn't matter if he can't get another base. So, Clem, he cannot scale him. True. All he has to do is just deny the expansion. That is, that is Clem's win condition. Deny the base over and over again and starve Max Pax out. Oh, without getting caught out though. Max Pax going for the dive. Max splits. Oh! It's a ghost. Oof. A handful of marauders. Shopper goes down. Nice EMP second to Shopper falls. Not bad. At the same time, the base is spotted. Clem is rotating. Catches out the army. Vikings go ham. They do catch one of the Colossus. GG gets called as Max Max gets called out and Clem, he will take game number one. Whew. That was game one. <laughs> GG. Again, Max Max running out of money towards the end and Clem able to take some better fights overall, able to get eyes on those bases, make sure that Max Max could not expand freely. And GG. GG well played. A very, very intense back and forth game one. I'll be honest, after the early game, winding it back, it happened a while ago, it was a long game. But if you remember the three gate blink, that snipe stim, like that was such a big moment for Max Pax. He stripped away so much momentum from Clem, and it did delay any kind of aggression. It is why Max Pax had such an, I was going to say easy, but such a clean, like early to mid game, where Max Pax, he was containing his opponent, he was delaying the third, he was getting a fourth, fifth base as well, like Max Pax had a very strong start to this game. And Clem was on the back foot, but he did claw his way back in. Was able to bring it back. GG. GG. Oh, God. <laughs> Very impressive. We go. Now we're getting into game number two. I think most turns would have lost that. I think so as well. Like, again, Max X had such a such a strong start to that as well. Where Clem was being so active. Harassing across the map. Keeping up his bases. I do think it was bold of Clem to go for the orbitals as well. Um, he had very minimal planetaries to actually, to actually defend his fringe bases. Which was quite risky. But uh, did hold his own. And it looks like someone might have lagged out of the game. Um, as we're taking a little bit here to load into game two. Here we go. But uh, usually if the loading screen kind of gets stuck, it means uh, someone in the lobby may have lagged out. Um, I mean, we saw Inu lag out of game one. And uh, hopefully he's okay. Otherwise, could be Eno again. 
Could be a meal. Uh -huh. We'll see. Here we go. Ah. But yeah, I hope you've all been enjoying yourselves. Again, it's been already a pretty intense finals. It's been solid. <laughs> and again, shout out to Wardy. I believe Wardy, he has confirmed that the Wardy TV Monday will continue for at least the month of October. I think he has confirmed that. Um, still not certain what's going to happen in November, just because we're all kind of just waiting to see if EPT or if ESL do have an announcement regarding the end of the off season. Um, we just we don't really know how long it's going to last. So for now, we're just kind of taking it one month at a time. One month at a time. And uh, it looks like it was the Chinese caster. <laughs> there we go. As spawning in the top right hand corner of uh, Ghost River, we have the Red Protoss player from the land of Denmark representing Cystorm Gaming down in the series. But this episode has a five, plenty more games to come, uh, plenty more opportunities to bounce back. It is Max Pax. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have this We have the French Terran player, the Blue Terran representing Team Liquid. It is Clem. we go but again do apologize for the delay to the start of game two but as you saw basically if someone lags out during the loading screen when you're loading into a game then um then off screen like uh behind the scenes kind of a timer ensues waiting for the for the person to reconnect so you have to wait like 90 seconds or something you have to wait for the timer to count down and then the person gets booted so you just you have to wait for that to happen and unfortunately, we lost our Chinese caster. So bad rush. Ah. But uh, hopefully, you can join us for the next game. As Clem is going to be going for a double gas opener. Interesting. Double gas into a faster factory. A bit of a more uh, tech heavy or aggressive start out of Clem. Meanwhile, Max Pax is going for a gate cyber expand. Send the opener out of the Protoss. And again, faster factory out of Clem. Now, technically, this could be the beginning of a one base all in. We have seen players like Gumiho and Oliveira, and even Ryung, I think, uh, go for one base all ins like this on Ghost River. But I don't think Clem is really that kind of player. This should just be uh, just a more tech heavy uh, start, getting to maybe Reacted Reaper Hellion into potentially faster tank production, faster cyclones, getting into a drop play, getting into Wither Mines, into an expansion. So just a delayed CC from Clem. Reaper is moving out, and he does throw down the CC. So no crazy one base all in. CC has been placed. Reaper dips in, and is forced out. Uh, now Clem hasn't seen anything yet, but at least he keeps the Reaper alive. As the tech of choice is thrown down, it's going to be another Twilight Council out of Max Pax. So it should be Blink. Now whether it's one, two, or three, sorry, whether it's two, three, or four gates, yet to be determined. Clem does dance with the initial depth. Getting a good, a good amount of damage, not bad. Oh! Ooh, that, the Adept does go down. Very nice catch. And behind this, you can see Clem rallying out with more Reapers and Hellions. So he's opening up Reaper Hellion. Looks like one Reaper is going to fall. Uh, Clem shouldn't lose the other Reaper, though. Okay, does keep it alive. One Reaper for two Adepts. Better trade for Clem. Does move out, so there's nothing here on the low ground. Boys have to be pulled away. And Clem does deny mining time at least. Nice mining time, still rallying across the map, going for the shield battery. The shield battery is under fire, boys, they have to be pulled. And they're pulled into Hellions. Shield battery goes down, they do slip in. Probes are falling, and this is getting a lot done. Get more than it should have. Four probe kills, and Max Max trying to defend with a bare minimum. 
We'll clean this up, but please add a fifth probe. Five probe kills, not bad. Checking the unit's loss tab. It was three Reapers, one Helia for two Adepts, shield battery, probes. It was also lost mine time at the natural. Bear that in mind as well. So a good amount of damage here by Clem. I mean, it could have been even worse. He could have like, ended the game here, got into the mineral line, and just roasted up the probes. But Max Pax does hold. And Clem follows it up with a mind drop. Now, this does mean that the low ground is quite exposed. There is a bunker on the way, but it's not done yet. Max Pax is pushing in, and does he delay the bunker? It's going to be close. Bunker is delayed. SMB is being pulled. Does finish off the bunker just in time. Meanwhile, we're mines across the map. They get two probes. Two probes with two mines. Max Pax does react in time. Does defend. And how many gateways, how many gateways do we have? It's going to be three gate blink. Okay, three gate blink, just like the previous game. Not overly committed. But he can move out without War Prism. We saw in the last game this led into a big denial of Stim. Widowmines are reset. They reborrow. Getting us, getting a Stalker. Not bad. One Stalker and one Probe. Them does pull away. Blink was revealed. And this time, the Raxes are a little bit further back. So this time, Stim is not as exposed. Two tanks to siege in the main. Max Pax ready for the bling into the main as well. He's going for the dive. And Clammy should be ready for this. I no, Stim, not again! Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> he wants it. He wants it back. Not this time. Thankfully, Stim is protected. The tanks were ready for it. Raven pass across the map. Max does reinforce. Another tank has arrived. Ooh, it's late to siege! A brutal pick off. One tank goes down. Ooh, but the punish is real! Yeah, so many tank bullies going off. That was what those three stalkers falling. Oh, I guess two. Observer gets scanned. Clem does defend. This time he protects his upgrade. Clem does rotate towards the low ground, does snipe the bunker, laid to repair. Late reaction out of Clem. No tanks either. Uh-oh. And no tanks in position. Boys are being pulled. Max Max is trading well. But the tank has arrived. Max Max, he just ignores the tank. Goes further into the natural. Going for another warp in. And the tank's having a hard time getting ready. That's going to be 10 SCV kills. Oh, my God. 10 SCV is going down. Another tank as well. Big tank boy is going off, but Max actually trades well. Leading out only a handful of soldiers. They're low, but they're still alive. And they get even more SCVs. SCV is going down. Stim is done. Ooh, getting up to 14 SCVs. Aye, aye, aye. With the help of Stim, and Clemmy should force this back. Trying to maintain himself. Meanwhile, across the map, we do get two probes. Not much. The Raven doing what he can. And Max Pax is not done. Again, doing this off of the back of only three gateways. Impressive. Now, what's important is that eventually, Clem will break out. And he can counterattack. Building up more Marauders, building up more tanks. Remember, the third base was delayed, just now getting saturated. Max Pax still keeping Clem pinned. It's a Marauder, gets two. Very nice snipes. I'm trying to chase him down. I have this on try. At least forces back the entire army. Clem, he gets some breathing room. But the pressure is on. That was how many? It was 14. 18. 18 SCV kills. Aye, aye, aye. Clem going for a drop. There is a spot of pylon. Pylon does confirm. 
Max that's pulling back. And the clam can threaten the main. Colossus have arrived. The game will settle from here. Again, it was good damage from Max Max, but he did kind of delay his own economy to make it happen. Clem now taking his own third TC as Max Max gets saturated. The drop is also keeping Max Max pinned. Which means Clem, he can finally break out. He can expand, he can breathe. But for now, he's stuck at home. Establishing his third. Clem does break out. Matching a pylon, picking up. Nice pick up. Max Max getting punished with moving out. And I feel like both players are gonna just they're gonna be taking a moment here to breathe. We have more Colossus on the way for the Protoss. It will eventually disrupt her. Meanwhile, Clem getting to his own Ghost Academy. Ghost production soon to begin. After an intense start to the game, we're, we're calming down. Clem getting ready for his own move out. I'm curious if he's gonna wait for the ghost or not. The first ghost is on the way. Clem does move out across the map. Is that a way to mine? He's gonna be pushing. Colossus do respond. There's three Colossus here for Max Max. Once again, going for the fourth Colossus. Two games in a row. Ooh, Prism goes down to the turrets, though. Prism does fall. Zella gets into the mineral line. Not much damage. I say that, some SMEs are going down. But Clem. Oh, the soup is real. He's about to max out. Like Max Max, who was getting damage done earlier, but it looks like he was that much more committed. He wasn't able to break Clem. And that's what matters. Clem is attempting to snowball from here. Tanks are repositioning. Salts are going down. I'm trying to force the issue. But unable to. Max Max is still ready for the drop. Still supplies pinned back. And Clem going for another June drop here towards the natural. So the Thermal Lance is about to finish up. It looks like it won't be denied. But the drop does dive in. And a lot of tech is exposed. Actually going into the main. It does force a recall. Drop has to pick up. Has to get the hell out of there. Again, Clem maxing out. Max Pack's not too far behind him. Supplies are quite similar. Well, speaking thing. No, we've been here before where Clem, he's got quite a lot of supply pinned here in these drops, and they aren't really getting much done yet, but they have potential. We have three medivacs outside of the main, two medivacs outside of the fourth. Max Max has to respect it. He's forced to stay back. Both armies are now maxed. Clem with so many more ghosts. He's on how many Vikings? Uh, just four. So not too many Vikings here for Clem, which I'm a little bit concerned based on the heavy Colossus count. Expansion is denied. Raven still posing a threat. Likewise, Prison gets caught out. 
Clem still looking for another way in. Fusion Core is on the way. We actually didn't really get to see much Liberator production last game. Uh, just because of how cha chaotic it was. We only had, like, defensive libs. But now with the Fusion Core, we can get in some Liberation. Clem, he's getting there. Working towards lib range. As the map is being cut in half. I mean, this is kind of the downside of this map, but one of the big features I should say is that the only ways to really apply pressure to any of these bases is to push up these ramps. And as long as the opposing player can keep up with your movement, you can't really gain any ground. Like pushing up this ramp here or towards the north or here in between the natural and the, and the third, here outside towards the south, it's so difficult pushing up these ramps. And that's why very often we see these split map scenarios where the map is cut in half and both players max. Let's drop a slow position. Um, this is where I would love to see Skytoss ready for max packs, like some Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. Get ready for that Skytoss transition. For now though, he's focusing on a ground-based army. Hasn't gone there yet. Is moving out. Max Pax pushing towards that natural as well. Meanwhile, here comes the drop finally! Massive EMPs! EMPs go up, Archons get caught out. Nice auto turrets as well to help support. And Clem, he's breaking through. He's trading well. Gets the mineral line. At the same time, hits the southern expansion. Max Pax trying to keep up. The base is killed. Let's kill the Nexus. Nova's turning back the main army. The drop is cleaned up, but that's 14 probe kills. And Clemmy trades well. Does trade well, but Max Max still has so many disruptors. It's five disruptors, still has potential. Speaking of, Nova's turning back the army, connecting with the tank. Rotating around. And open position for Clem. Max Max doesn't overextend. Again, with these reinforcements, Clem he has potential for, for a flank or a surround. Max Max instead peeling off towards the natural. And Liberation has arrived. And Max Max, he goes for the natural instead, takes out the planetary. Planetary is buying time, though. The army does respond. Max Pax doesn't gain ground. I see him on the disruptors. One disruptor goes down. And connections are a little bit lackluster. Colossus falls. And Max Pax, he plummets in supply. He lost so many disruptors. Three Colossus as well. Oh, nice Nova though. Nova takes down a good chunk of ghosts. The drop finally coming back in. That was the initial drop that was outside the fourth. Crazy. <laughs> finally coming into play. Oh no! Medivac's cleaned up. Medivac finally goes down. But Clem has been pulling Max Max apart. And again, what is the answer to the libs? What is the answer? He's trying to rely on Stalker. Massive EMPs, they go off. They shut down the Stalkers. Nervous don't connect. And Max Max is just getting picked apart. This is what we expect out of Clem. GG gets called a much more dominant performance. And Clem takes game number two. GG. Game one was close. Game one was scrappy. Here in game two, Clem was a lot more secure. I mean, I say that. Initially, Clem was actually up against the wall against the three-gate blink aggression, if you recall. Max Pax, he was actually getting quite a lot of damage. He got 14 SCVs, but he did heavily delay his third. He heavily delayed his third base. He delayed his own economy to make that happen. Alas, he did not break Clem, and Clem eventually was able to get his own third, able to snowball out of control, gain map control, and look quite comfortable from there. Just pulling Max Pax apart. And with that, GG. No shot. No shot. Ah. 
with that GG well played, uh, Clem does take a 2-0 lead. And, uh... Oh, uh, that's a little bit sad. <laughs> does take a 2-0 lead, and, um... And our players are getting into game number three. Uh, and I've been left behind. <laughs> I would I would love to find out the conclusion of this series. Uh, but I have been left behind, unfortunately. Um, so they've all gotten into game number three. And uh, if there is a game four, then we can we can find out the uh, the conclusion of the series. We can jump into game four, maybe even into game five, but uh we won't find out what happens in game three. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. But yeah, the players, they just um, they just made the lobby, jumped in. And um, unfortunately, we were left behind. Smooch, smooch. Does happen from time to time. Does happen. Uh. Uh, but yeah, I guess we're gonna be going on a short break. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping that that uh that Max Max he can bring it back and um and force a series out of it and then maybe we can conclude the series. But uh yeah, for now we're gonna be going on um we're gonna be going on a break and when we come back we will either have the rest of this finals or uh, it'll end. <laughs> uh, again, if you want to check out the rest of the series um or, the, or if you want to check out game three, you can follow Wardy. Wardy, he's uh he's of course hosting the event and he is casting. Um, likewise, it is also being casted in other languages. Uh, Koka's casting it in French. Um, we had Sobad casting it in Chinese and Inu casting it in Korean. Fun fact, uh, Inu didn't get into game one because he lagged out. Game two, Sobad Rush, Chinese caster lagged out. And here in game three, I'm just left behind. Uh, uh, every game, someone was left out. Feels bad, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, with that, we're going to be going on a short break. We'll see you guys uh, after the game and we'll see how the series concludes. Until then, see you soon. And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back again. I do apologize that we weren't able to able to bear witness to game three, but it has concluded. It has concluded. Congratulations as Max Pax does take the series three to zero. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. Again, it is a shame that we weren't able to be a part of the final game. Um, it is a bit of a feels bad, man. I was watching over on Wardy's channel, and basically they were on Amphion. Um, instead, Max Pax had opened up Phoenix. He opened up Phoenix and went for three base all-in. Max Pax, he went for 6-6 six, six probes. He went for a mass all-in all with Phoenixes, with charge lots. Um, did try it with Archons as well. Did try to break Clem. Uh, Clem, he defended beautifully. It was very impressive. He was able to focus on all the Phoenixes as they tried to lift the tanks. The Zealots, they crashed into a brick wall. And after Clem defended, GG. GG, well played. Clem did win at 3-0 in the end. Um, I appreciate that Max Pax did try something different in that final game did try it did attempt a different approach but alas uh alas your lin did fail and clem snowballed from there so very impressive um i do apologize for today's broadcast a couple of things not going well right like the stream went down earlier so we missed game one of hero versus clem or at least you guys mixed miss out on it uh likewise here we were left out of the lobby for the final game as well so um yeah a little bit a little bit sad a little bit demotivated but <laughs> It's fine. GG. GG. Well played. Uh, with that, that will conclude our broadcast here for the evening. We're going to be going, uh, we're going to be jumping into the Stego Monday Cup. That's going to be in how many hours? In eight hours. In eight hours time, we're going to be covering another tournament. So we're going to be going to rest. We're going to be going to, I'm going to be going to get some sleep. I'll wake up like in six hours time. I'll get some breakfast, get some food, and then we'll have our next cast. We'll have our next tournament. Have our next tournament. Um, and both Clem and Max Pax might stay up. They might stay up to compete. They might stay up to play um, in the Stego Monday Cup as well. We'll see. We'll see if either one goes full degen and comes in once again. But uh, yeah, very impressive stuff here out of Clem. Honestly, game one was still very close. Game one could have gone either way between these two players. And I still stand by what I said before, how... 
Clem typically has been very dominant over max packs over these past couple of months um but over the past two weeks or so max packs has been looking better and better has been posing a threat to clem i do still favor clem overall but max packs has been you know able to take maps and able to take series didn't take a map here tonight but again it was still quite close still quite close i don't think the three zero really uh shows just how competitive these two players are against each other um just you know slightly more in favor of clem here tonight not dropping a map gg well played but there's a world out there there's a world out there where definitely this could have been a 3-1 or a 3-2 um especially in both game one and game two game three was a little bit more one-sided there and uh even game two was more in favor of clem after he survived uh the three gate blink aggression but regardless thank you so much for tuning in thanks so much for watching hope you all enjoyed yourselves hope you all had a good time um despite missing out on some of those games uh, at least we were able to you know conclude the series i guess and, uh <laughs> feels Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Uh, so again, our next broadcast is going to be in eight hours' time. If you want to help support the Cranky Ducklings, you can do so via uh, via following us on all the social medias. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Discord. All things Cranky Ducklings. Likewise, you can also follow us on... Um, or you can also support us on Patreon. You can follow us on YouTube as well. Um, most likely on Wednesday, I'm going to be re-recording some of these games to upload to YouTube. Um... So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I mean, re-recording is fine. It's just um, uh, editing and rendering these videos can can basically take up like four hours of a PC's time. So uh, it's less than ideal, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll just get around to editing FODs. I'll most likely be working on that on Monday. On Monday. Otherwise, thank you, for so, th ah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you guys had a great time. Uh, for those that are curious, this tournament is a weekly tournament. Every week, we do have a Wardy TV Monday, at least until the off-season does conclude. So we're still kind of waiting for that to... We're still waiting for um, word from ESL to see when or if that does occur. Until then, though, we do have the Wardy TVs as consistent uh, open cups here this Monday afternoon. Or this Monday evening. I mean, it's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, so time to get some rest. Time to get some sleep. Um, hope you guys had a great time. And we'll see you guys again in eight and a half hours for the Stego Monday number two. Number two. See you then. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, we're going to be heading off for the night. See you then. That'll be almost midnight. Yeah, it's at a it's at a worse time slot for uh, for Europe. Fab, it's two a.m. here, Fab. It's two a.m. Aha. <laughs> but I'll see you guys in eight hours. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for support. We'll see you guys in time. Until then, bye bye. Hasta luego. Ciao, papi. Ciao.